Welcome back everyone to Bee Mother Reviews and as you may be aware I had the pleasure of attending the recent Singapore Comic Convention uh, which took place on the 9th and 10th of September and while I was there I had a chance to meet up with the HMO team at their booth. They had lots of exciting things on display so I got to meet up with Danny Hines, I got to meet up with Mufizal, Safara, Daniel, and I believe Benjamin was there. James TCE, their marvelous painter, was there. I mean, he does amazing work. I got to see some of his prototypes firsthand. Uh, man, they had lots of exciting things on display. And we got to catch up with Danny Hines to do a booth tour. So let's take a look at what Danny has to say of all the pieces on display at the HMO booth. Uh, let's check it out. Hey, Chris, nice to meet you. And this is the HMO booth. And this is the first piece that we're going to be talking about, and this is Necrosis. Um, Necrosis is a very interesting character. He is our fourth edition of uh, the Bathos line. And he's kind of an anti-hero type character like Deathpool. Um, so he's like, he starts off as a villain and then he kind of turns into a hero and then he's, he's kind of mixed in the story. And um, basically he was an original son of Connor. Um, if you get the book, we are doing the first um, edition of the Bathos books uh, that you can read. The first um, five chapters. And basically his chapter is chapter four. And it's just a small preview of this guy. Um, and it just explains basically how he became like this and what he's doing in the story. And then, um, so um, he's, you know, his face was kind of burnt off and um, he was designed to destroy uh, Zectus. And Zectus are these um, aliens which you see on Crow King's base and they are the land giants and then there is sea giants which we will see on Sorrow's base in a bit. Okay and uh, basically um, yeah he's from um, Seps Valley and um, there'll be more details in the book and hopefully he'll be painted up soon. And then we got the beautiful uh, Muriel and this is from Spectral Knights. This is uh, one of the new lines from HMO, a uh, new universe and we got the books as well. I'll just go through the book really quickly. There's five chapters and there is um, some artwork somewhere. Somewhere in there. There we go. There you go. And there's Grendel. Grendel is the second character. She's the main... Um, she's the hero and he's the main villain uh, of the line. And uh, there's some That's nice the artwork. Is that the same character? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is... She comes with three heads. And uh, basically, she's uh, she's a light bearer, and what that means is um, they can see at night these uh, these knights. Um, they, they they pour some some it's called tears of lies, and they pour it in their right eye, and they can see at night. So that's the whole thing about Muriel. And then we go on to uh, Ren, and basically Ren is sold out. It's sold out on the first day, as you guys know. And this is a production copy of Ren. Nice. So um, I've got her on the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it came out really nice. Uh, if you if you um, if you see the prototype, uh, I think they did a really really nice job with this, uh, with the detail. Uh, with the base, with the weathering and stuff. Yeah, I like the cape. The cape, the base, uh, there's, there's a bot, you know, that's been shot down. And Chris, who just got the first edition of the Bathos story, yeah, I did. It, it, it explains um, basically this uh, whole story of how she shot this drone down in the book. So, the hardcover books, you can, um, if you have the show, you can get them. They're limited to only 30 and we're going to have a soft cover on the website which is going to be come out um, a little bit later and it's okay. going to be a lot cheaper than the hardcover, okay. of course. Now this guy is awesome. So this is your favorite. Yep. Um, My favorite this, from the whole booth. Yeah, and this is Croaking and basically with this, with this sci-fi line we just kind of wanted to do something different. Um, so you know, before robots were like kind of created, before they jumped in the full mech suit, there was like half mechs which they could con control and stuff like that. Kind of like Avatar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And an I think it's skeleton, right? Hey. An exoskeleton. An exoskeleton. Yeah. yeah. And um, his head comes out, and there's another head. Uh, maybe I can put it on. 
Uh, I did see it. It's there somewhere, I know that. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. There is another hit for him, um, and I, I still need to write the story for that piece. Um, but uh, And this is a production copy as well. And um, I think it really came out nice with the weathering and the scratches and stuff like that. And then moving on, we go over to the Mega Man pieces. And these are production copies as well. Uh, we got the light up now um, that you can see. It light ups on the, 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 the helmet. And it also light ups on the base. Uh, the blue one is really nice. We got the, the base closed. You can open it or close it. This is like kind of like a white dome. And uh, there's light up there as well and there's light up on the blaster. And these are sold out as well. Uh, these are production copies and this comes out in October. Um, so make sure you get your copy uh, when it comes out. If you missed it, um, there is Zero coming out next. Uh, I don't know if they're going to preview Zero for you guys, but uh, Zero does look amazing. It really does. Okay. And then we got the event the exclusive. Brand new. Um, this is Sorrow, and this is stealing the show. Um, it's an amazing piece. She's one of the main villains. She is uh, Crow King's general. So whenever Crow King has something to sort out on a planet, he sends Sorrow and she gets things done. Um, the base is really cool. As you can see, like we got this uh, a clear resin and it's mixed with uh, the blood. And this is called a Zamzin. These are the aqua giants uh, that Sorrow hunts. And a suit, as you can see from her suit, um, this is Atlantean armor. So um, in the story, uh, we're saying that she got her armor from Atlantis. And um, there's two switch out swords. This is the metal one. And as you can see, like from here, her hand is chopped off. That's and cool. um, yeah, that is really cool because you got like the so veins hard. and the blood and stuff. And then basically, you know, there's this machine at the back um, and it is, um, yeah, it's powering her arm. And you know, she's holding the faceplate. There's a faceplate that comes over the face. She can hold it like that. So there's like three display options. And this is really cool. It's kind of like the veins and stuff, how it was severed and chopped off. I love off. that. The blood in the water looks awesome. The blood in the water is cool. And, and the cool thing about this is no one will be able to recast the statue. How are we going to make this? Because of the blood in the water. So it's kind of like a watermark for us, which is really cool. Um, and then we got the blue version. And this is the normal version of the character. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the face plate is closed. Um, so you can clip that out and it can be unmasked. And then there is another head. Um, with her face out, right? There's another head which is, um, totally she has unmasked. short hair. Yeah. No, it's unmasked. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and this is her, uh, uh, this is called uh, Lightning Hilt. And basically these swords are stole, uh, are taken from um, the Zectus. And uh, that's how she was able to sever off this arm. And in the production piece, this is going to come with light up. Nice. So yeah, um, so you're gonna get two swords, and you're gonna get two heads, and then this faceplate can come out and switch out. And go into her hand. This can go on her hand. The it face can, plate? yeah, it can go on her hand. And the black one is a battle damaged faceplate. Yes. So you're gonna get a normal faceplate, and then a battle damaged faceplate where you can see the eye. Mm -hmm. So um, and then we got the star of the show, obviously, and this is Morrigan from Darkstalkers. This is the main character in Darkstalkers, kind of like Ryu for Street Fighter equivalent. And this just came out amazing. If you zoom out, you'll be able to see a skull. Yeah. Just forming up. And from different angles it just looks like rocks. Mm -hmm. And then we have all of the, um, the bats just flying around. Yeah. And the pose is very iconic. This is actually an Art Gems uh, pose that he drew for one of the Capcom books quite a while ago. And um, it's amazing. Um, amazing pose. The face came out nice with the glass eyes. Um, yeah. There's glass eyes in there if you so check Luke it out. So Luke was saying you guys have to make those yourselves. Yeah. 
we have to make this. And Capcom was like seven eyelashes. Yes. Very picky about yes. how she came out. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And um, but it, but it's good because it made the piece better. And um, you got the bats on the. Um, on the outfit. Yeah. So, and these, in the production piece, they are actually going to make these kind of like transparent, you know, like a bat's wings, you can actually see through them. Yeah. So the wings, they're going to have change outs, a uh, swap out. And with Morrigan, there's actually three um, uh, different uh, types. So there's the, the Lilith colors, which is the red and blue. And then there's going to be a white version, which is going to come out in Christmas time. So there's three uh, for this. And um, I think this is the star of the show. Um, really nice. Yeah. I was saying, I don't know who she is, really. Okay, but, but oh, fair enough. Really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, really it's, cool. it's 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 a piece that it's you can make it as a centerpiece, you know. Yeah. So I was saying, like, like I don't know who she is, but I would be happy to have that. Oh, that's, that's a awesome. good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so for awesome. those that don't know who Dark Stalkers is, um, this is a good piece to to have, and the and the paint is 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 really immaculate. James Tice is the prototype painter on all of these pieces, and he. He really, really does uh, good work. So that's the proper pronunciation, Tice. I uh, no, it's wondering. actually it's actually James T C E. Oh. Uh, I just say James Tice, oh. but it's actually T C E. I always wonder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks, Thanks Danny. Chris, for this, and I uh, hope to check you guys later. And uh, thank you again for the interview. All right. That's the H M O booth from Danny Hines. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that tour from Danny. Uh, we went in depth on all the pieces there. Uh, and one thing I really love about HMO is they're really pushing the boundaries all the time. Uh, whether it was this piece here, one of the early ones, the Medusa, with the 200 snakes in her hair and the real eyelashes. You go to Dante that came out earlier this year and the UV paint scheme that they gave to give this glowing effect. And then you go with something like Morgan with the glass eyes I mean, she looked phenomenal. Sorrow with the, the blood and the water on the base looked very, very realistic. I mean, they're always looking for these new ideas, and that's what I really, really love about Handmade Object. Um, great group of people, too. I've really enjoyed meeting up with Danny and Mufazal, Safara, you know, everyone else in the booth, James, as well. I was lucky enough to get the hardcover of the Bounties of Bathos short stories written by Danny. It's edition number one of 30 of the hardcovers, signed by Danny and Mufiz also. That's really cool. Also got to thank Safara for this awesome, one-of-a-kind Daredevil drawing she gave me. This is really, really cool. I'm going to put this somewhere special, so thanks again for that. Um, you know, again, really, really cool to meet up with those guys, and very exciting things that come from HMO. Stay tuned to our channel, because we're definitely going to have reviews of Ren, and Crow King, I got both those pieces coming later this year, so I think Ren's scheduled to ship like any month now, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully you enjoyed the booth tour from Singapore Comic Con 2017, and we'll talk to you guys soon.